option two, uh, which is collaboration with GitHub. Um, so we're going to learn about version control and what that is. And we're also going to start using a collaborative workflow. So we're going to focus on forking and branching. So uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to go on now to introduce what version control is. Then I'm going to go on to introduce what forking is. And then you are going to be doing a forking exercise, or we're all actually going to be doing it together. Um, then after that, um, I'm going to run through um, uh, the collaboration kind of um, workflow uh, that includes branching. And we're going to do a branching exercise together. So we're actually, we can all actually do it together because we're such a small group. Um, and then we'll sort of wrap up. So I'm hoping we'll get through all of that um, in time. Um, hopefully, I, I'll just say the code of conduct. It's basically be nice and kind to um, each other, um, I know, and respectful. Um, and yeah, we it, this kind of um, workshop, um, we have lots of, um, we make mistakes, we have lots of questions. So we just need to be mindful that people work and learn at different paces. So we need to make sure that we are respectful of that, of those differences. Um, and if you do um, today, you're not happy about something that happens um, and you think something is against our code of conduct, which you can see a link to the full code of conduct in the HackMD document, um, please do report it to me or actually Celine's details are also in the HackMD document. So let's go with version control. So um, really we're starting with um, like, this is all about collaboration. We work in teams, we do research projects. We're not, we're very rarely a lone worker in research. So the challenges really are, we need to be able to create collaborative documents. So what are the challenges of doing this? So the challenges are that um, we have many people that want to input into our documents and, and they want to do this in an asynchronous way. Um, they might also want to do it at, at the same time synchronously like we're doing today. And this, this brings conflicts of edits. It brings conflicts of other things like the location people are coming from, time zones and things like that. And it creates lots of different versions of documents that are then very, very difficult to bring together into one document and it can become extremely time consuming um, if you don't think about how you're going to do this in the first place. So, um, hold on a minute. When we do coding or we write text or we're creating some sort of content using computers, um, what we do is we end up um, with a collection of files in a folder or a directory. And um, even if this isn't on GitHub or another um, sort of repository tool, we, we often call it a repository. So on your, on your, um, your lone computer, you've got lots of folders which are all named. Um, so even if you're working alone, you're probably going to make lots of changes uh, to the content or the code that you're working on, and um, you will change some of these wording and the functionality and um, leave uh, other things untouched. So making uh, mistakes while you experiment with all these ideas. Um, you might make uh, multiple copies of your files to preserve a version that's working while you try to improve it or add functionalities to uh, your code. Um, but keeping track of all these versions and the differences between them becomes difficult with simple um, file naming um, sort of conventions. So what you actually need to do is you need version control. So um, imagine your document has this life history. So version control is like a time machine. It can take you back to the moment your document was born or any other point in time when you or your collaborator saved that document. Um, you don't save copies of your document, you just um, save the life story of the document or the timeline of the document. So version control is the management of the changes to the file. Um, it can be done in a sim uh, simply by changing the name of the file. Um, but as I've said, this is not really a good way of doing things because um, it actually um, you can forget to do it. And if you're working with lots of collaborators, it's very easy to forget to rename files all of the time. Um, you can also do it through very simple version control tools. So such as Google Drive and Dropbox, they actually create histories for all of your documents that are within there. And you can actually go back in time, you can see edits. So 
they are really, really useful um, version control tools. Um, and I have to say, I use those a lot. So I, I wouldn't say that there's anything, um, well, there's nothing bad with using any of them, but I, I think they are incredibly useful, useful in terms of their simplicity, actually. Um, but you can go a step further by using advanced tools, and this is where Git comes in. So Git itself is the is the programming language beh behind GitHub. It's it's what GitHub is sort of based on, um, the sort of version control behind the GitHub interface. And um, so what I mean by revisions are the changes that are associated with a particular timestamp and um, the details like what changes were made, who changed them, and why. And really the difference between the simple tools like uh, Google Drive and Dropbox and the advanced tools is that with, with the advanced version control system, so it's not just GitHub, there's GitLab and there's Subversion, I think is another one, because um, there, there isn't just GitHub, just to make, make you all aware of that. It's just GitHub is, is the most used of all of these version control systems. Um, uh, but, the diff real difference is just the detail of the version control system. Um, so Git allows you to put in a lot of detail with the messages that you can put in. So it's a very clear record of um, who has done what and what changes that have been made. Um, whereas the simple tools, they just record a history. It does, it does record um, who has done the changes usually on them. There is a bit of a difference between those simple tools, but um, it's not it's not always clear what the change is. You have to really hunt through them. So the advanced tool gives you a bit more control over the, the history tracking of the documents and, and your work. So, um, so the benefits of using it are um, that you can collaborate in real time. Um, it stores this history. And the great thing is you can go back to previous versions. So for example, if maybe you were working on something and um, you made changes one day and then you realise that actually you preferred the version that you started with at the beginning of the day, you can just jump back to that. You don't have to remember what that was or have saved it. You can just jump back in time. Um, that actually is a really, really useful thing to happen. Um, and um, yeah, so with um, these advanced version systems, so we're talking about um, Git, Git now, things that um, have Git behind them, so GitHub and GitLab. Um, we can create a very detailed line of commits. So if you remember from the first session, commit means a save. So, um, so what we can do there is create this very detailed life story of the documents in a, in a timeline. So um, when we share and work on projects with collaborators, um, managing the changes or commits that multiple collaborators um, working in different places at different times make to single uh, sets of document become really important. Um, and when we're working with multiple collaborators, everyone needs to know and understand what commits are being incorporated into the repository and why. So, um, so good communication becomes really, really important. And this is where your commit message uh, or label or description, because in GitHub, you can write a, a lay, um, uh, title of the commit and you can do a description. Um, those become really important when you're working in a collaborative team, especially when it's on um, a particular um, part of the project that you're trying to work on uh, exactly the same, same thing. So, if, for example, if you're doing data collection or you're writing a paper or something like that, you can actually totally see where someone's got up to and you can pick, up, pick the work up and, and move on with the task. Um, so it says, uh, oh, the great news is that um, there's a piece of version control software to help us uh, both manage and communicate with collaborators about commits to our project. So um, this is where Git comes in and um, its space is for GitHub. Um, and this is the platform that we're gonna use today. Um, and why is GitHub so great? Well, we asked, I spoke about this last time. So it's, it's a place online that you can host repositories. And because it's online, um, we can, anyone can use it anywhere in the world. Um, they are, um, we are, um, it's free to use, which is the other great thing that's not on there. Um, it helps you work with your, um, with contributors and collaborators. Um, it provides this web interface for version control. So if you're not a coder and you don't know how to use Git on the command line, GitHub helps you because it makes it a friendly sort of interface. 
fair, I would say fairly friendly interface. It's not super friendly, um, but it's much easier than actually learning how to code um, from scratch. Um, definitely much easier than that. Um, it can be used for project management. That's mostly how I use it, is for project management. Um, and you can also communicate. So we're going to talk about um, communicating and work, uh, the, in the workflow today. Um, and it's really useful when um, you want groups of people to work together. So on the Fair Fight Lift project, we don't live in the same place. I'm in the UK. Celine is, well, at the moment, she's in, she's in Belgium, but she normally is in Spain. And then our other um, team members are in other bits of Spain and in the US. Um, and so we, we never actually meet in person. We can't, we can't give over um, thumb drives or... I don't know when you, I'm going to say floppy disks. That makes me sound super old. Um, <laughs> if you're ever going to do that. But um, yeah, we can't, we can't work um, even at the same time most of the time. So we work really asynchronously, but we keep a real record of what we're doing in GitHub. So we, we know what tasks that we're doing, we know where people have got up to, and we can just carry on the work that we're doing um, after the last person. So, um, so as I sort of said in the last session, GitHub itself has its own like super language that you, you've got to learn. So the terms that we are going to learn today, we've already talked about commit. So that's the saving function on GitHub. We're going to learn about branches and forks. So these are ways to bring to work in your own branch or fork um, and then uh, bring that work back into um, the main part of the repository. We're going to go over pull requests, which is how actually you bring the work into the main repository. And then merging is the final stage where it actually does get put into the main repository. So these are all words that we're going to use today. Um, before I go on any longer, uh, any further, um, is there any questions about version control? Last time we um, we uh, looked at the main um, uh, interface of GitHub. So this is just a repository that's been set up and um, it just points you to some of these other features that we're going to learn about today. So um, I'll just start from the top here. Um, there are lots of buttons at the top that allow you to do other things. So issues is where you start to have conversations about, uh, about ideas that you want to collaborate on. So you can start that from the very top of your repository. Um, we've got here, so we're going to use this button quite a lot today. So when you're in the landing, um, main landing page of a repository, this is like a grey button with a little arrow, and this allows you to know what branch of the repository you're in. So at the moment, this is in the main branch, so this is where uh, what everybody can definitely see in um, when they first come into the repository, but you can make branches, so these are um, branches that are parallel, so part repositories that are parallel to the main branch um, that you can do your bits of work on and get reviewed before you put it into the main repository. So this button allows you to start um, uh, to name branches and start to work on branches. Nicola, files here and folders, folders and files. Um, remember with GitHub, there's a bit of a quirk of um, the, the folders. You can't actually set up a blank folder, you have to set up a uh, folder and then you put a document into it straight away to make it into the folder. Um, so today, if, if you can't remember how to do that, we'll, we'll do that as well today, because that is a bit of a quirk at the beginning um, that people have problems with. Um, and then our readme file, that's what um, is usually auto you allow to be automatically rendered at the beginning of a repository that's made and you put all your details of a, of a repository in there. Um, you can, um, so these buttons over here, so it's, it's from um, this, this, um, this green button here, if you click it, this pops out, and it, it allows you to clone the whole repository. Um, you can open it in GitHub Desktop is another, it's an app that you can download onto your local computer, and it actually is, uh, once you've mastered GitHub, I would say try and move on to GitHub Desktop, because actually it allows you to um, rearrange files much easier. You can't really do that on GitHub itself. Um, so it, you download a, a version of the repository onto your local computer and it's like a folder on your computer and you can rearrange that and then you can use GitHub desktop to commit to those changes and to push them up into GitHub. 
So it's actually a really useful tool. It also, the other thing that GitHub Desktop allows you to do, and it's a free app that you can get through, through GitHub, if you just search GitHub Desktop. Um, the other thing that allows you to do, which you can't do on GitHub, is on um, GitHub, you can't actually go back um, in time on GitHub itself. You can do that, actually. So if you've made a commit, you can't go back on that on GitHub, but you can do it through GitHub Desktop. You can actually like squash a commit and go back. Um, I think squash is actually the right word, but I think there's another word for it. Um, but yeah, GitHub Desktop is a good one to learn once you've mastered GitHub um, itself. Um, and you can um, download uh, your repository. So there's lots of different ways for you to copy your repositories and put them somewhere else on your local computer, or you can even move them onto things like GitLab as well. If you, because a lot of the time GitLab is used in, if you've got to work in a data safe haven, if you're using sensitive data, um, uh, GitHub is usually not supported within those environments. So, um, but you could copy a repository from GitHub and put it into GitLab, which is used in, in those very secure uh, research environments. Um, and then the other thing we're going to use a lot today is forking. So up here, so this allows you to make a complete copy of a somebody else's repository. And then we're also going to use the pull request button. So these are all at the top. This is the top right. This is like the top in the middle. So this allows you to so pull requests is when you've been working on your branch and you want to bring that work into the main repository. You do a request to pull it in, basically, and you say why you want to do that. And then hopefully somebody approves that and moves it into the main repository. OK, so um, let's go through some of these things in a bit more detail. So we've really covered um, commit. This is about saving a version of your file. And again, it's really important when you're working um, collaboratively. And I have to say, it's really good just to get into the habit of writing a message when you do your commit so that you can actually see what someone has done. And it has it can be a very small message, but just, um, you know, I've updated this section or I've added in a link for this, something like that. And it just it, it um, shows who has um, who's done it when it happened and what they did. And it gives each one, each one a little number as well, usually. 